Sometimes draft picks don't pan out the way we planned. In fact, there is usually at least some disappointment once expectations meet reality. But there are those not-so-wonderful times when the most highly rated prospects turn out to be absolute duds. Some are so much worse than expected that their names live in infamy. Unfortunately, at the top of that list, or at least close to it, is Josh Jackson. Jackson was a Navy brat born in San Diego in 1997. He got his talent from his mother, Apples Jones, a star for the University of Texas at El Paso. After the birth of her son, Apples was invited to try out for the WNBA Washington Mystics franchise. However, she decided to focus on raising young Josh instead. A natural basketball player from day one, as an eighth grader, he was held back for missing classes to practice. But the hard work paid off. In his sophomore year, Josh led his Detroit-based Consortium College Prep School to its first state title. His numbers speak for themselves. Jackson averaged 28 points, 15 rebounds, and 6 assists per game. It's easy to see why Josh was his class's number one national high school player to many scouts. 247 Sports picked him as the absolute best player in the nation for 2016 and gave him the highest rating they had ever provided a player. But they weren't alone. Rivals.com and Scout.com announced him as the best player in his class. Meanwhile, ESPN placed him second. Adding to the list of honors, Jackson won the McDonald's All-American co-MVP. What was the secret of this phenomenal prospect? He was absolutely top-notch in scoring on the move, particularly on the low post. As you can tell, his scoring moves are a product of superb athleticism. Another underrated part of Jackson's game is his rebounding chops. Between his athleticism and high basketball IQ, the swingman is often well positioned to take down boards when they count. He does so no matter what position you put Josh in, giving his team an advantage. But perhaps the most enticing element from a coach's perspective is his size, quickness, and versatility. About as agile as six foot eight players can get, you can play him effectively as a two, three, or even four, and he will put up strong stats. Josh played a single season for the Jayhawks, but it was a gem. Coach Bill Self put Jackson in the power forward position, hoping to take full advantage of his athleticism. Although that is not a natural position for the swingman, he put up stellar numbers. The freshman scored 16.3 points per game, took 7.4 rebounds, and passed for three assists. No one was surprised the highly rated freshman did so well. The Jayhawk won Big 12 Freshman of the Year and was named a Big 12 First Team. Jackson was also named to the Sporting News Second Team All-American. One incident seriously marred Jackson's short time at the University of Kansas. On December 9, 2016, the player was partying with friends at a club called The Yacht. One of his friends became embroiled in a dispute with ex-girlfriend Mackenzie Calvert, also a basketball player at the school. Apparently, she threw a drink in his friend's face. Jackson and pal followed her to the parking lot and then caused thousands of dollars in damage to Calvert's 2016 Ford Focus. Among other things, the player kicked Calvert's door twice near the door handle. According to court documents, Jackson was yelling for her to get out of the car and that he would beat her ass. The courts let him off with a warning, and the player was required to complete an anger management course, do community service, and apologize to the victims. But, unfortunately, the University of Kansas did little to handle the matter. Instead, they announced they would address the issue internally and did not suspend Jackson for a single game. In retrospect, that incident indicated that Josh may not have been ready for the pros. Nonetheless, the promise of a high pick and a lucrative contract proved too big a temptation. So after one year in Kansas, Josh took former All-Star B.J. Armstrong and his agent and declared his eligibility for the 2017 NBA Draft. Despite his impressive basketball pedigree, there were some lingering concerns over Jackson's mentality. The parking lot incident was unsettling, but there were also some professional issues with the swingman's game. 
three-pointers have become an obligatory part of the guard's repertoire, and that was never Josh's strong suit. He hit 37% in college, and some scouts believed he would do worse in the pros. However, the overall upside was too significant to ignore. According to NBA Scouting Live, he has the potential to be a multi-all-star in the NBA. He is a high flyer that can attack the basket to garner scores, especially when he is out on the break. If he can improve his jump shot and find a way to be more consistently effective on the half court, that could really enhance his game. As expected, Jackson was a top five draft pick. However, the Phoenix Suns selected him fourth from a talented 2017 pool. Josh was chosen just behind future superstar Jason Tatum and King star De'Aaron Fox. Some players drafted behind him include Donovan Mitchell, Bam Adebayo, and John Collins. As expected, the long ball was the biggest problem for Jackson in his rookie season, but he underperformed even the most pessimistic prognostications. The swingman shot 26% from three and had trouble with two-point jump shots as well. But that wasn't the only issue. Josh had always prioritized offense over defense. That was less of a problem when he dominated high school and college. But in the NBA, his defensive lapses would always be a more significant issue. Although later in his pro career, Jackson would improve his defensive skills significantly. He would never become more than an adequate defender. That is why when his offense never reached the heights his college career promised, Jackson was often judged surplus to the requirements of NBA teams. But that wasn't the only issue plaguing Josh's early professional career. Unfortunately, his personal and legal problems continued in the NBA. According to Arizona Sports 98.7 FM, Jackson was charged with resisting arrest and escape while attending the Rolling Loud Music Festival after attempting to enter a VIP area multiple times without a proper pass. After attempting to enter the section several times, an officer took him to a nearby golf cart and sat Jackson down there. The player then tried to run away. But of course, this begs the question, why not use the golf cart? Either way, the following day, the Sun's shooting guard posted the $1,000 bond and was released. On June 4th, 2019, Lorena Villela, the mother of Jackson's child, smelled marijuana on her daughter after picking the girl up from his house. She also claimed the daughter was high off the substance. The NBA did nothing about these incidents and Jackson was back to playing in 2019-2020. Then, finally, the Suns had enough of his shenanigans and underwhelming performance and traded the swingman to the Memphis Grizzlies. Wisely, Memphis had no intention of letting Josh coast on his prodigious talent. Instead, they wanted the swingman to prove himself on the court, so the number four draft pick was unceremoniously dumped into the G League. But he worked hard and put up stellar numbers. The guard averaged 20.3 points, 7.5 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 1.4 blocks, and 1.3 steals per game. He even made the All-NBA G League for the Western Conference at midseason. In a way, this was the finest moment of Josh's career. Demotion to the G League can be a soul-crushing experience for an elite prospect like Jackson. It takes a good deal of mental toughness to buckle down and play your best after that sort of humiliation. But Josh did it and earned the respect of the organization in the process. With some of the best from in his career, the swingman was called up to the NBA in January and started proving his value coming off the bench. It seemed only a matter of time before Jackson was a starter for the Grizzlies, but unfortunately, the stars did not align for him. Again. The season ended prematurely as COVID-19 ravaged the NBA and the world. The Pistons took a chance on Jackson, signing him in December 2020. As a local boy, the Detroit fans had great expectations for Josh and hoped to write his career. There were signs that he was doing just that, as Jackson became a reliable scorer for the Pistons, averaging a career-high 13.4 points per game in 2020-21. But problems remained. The swingman had improved his outside shooting over the years. After a terrible showing in his rookie season, Jackson significantly improved from 26% to 32% from outside the arc. But, unfortunately, Jackson simply could not build on that progress. 
After shooting 30% in his first year for the Pistons, Josh's average dropped sharply in 2021-22 to a sad 26%, same as his rookie year. As his form regressed, it surprised no one that he was included in the four-team trade that brought Marvin Bagley III to Detroit. One of the sad ironies of the move was that poor Josh was informed of the trade on his birthday. The Kings weren't particularly keen on Jackson and didn't give him enough minutes to prove himself. With 10 minutes per game, Josh scored a decent four points per game. But his outside shot continued to deteriorate, with a low 17% for the Kings. It just wasn't enough for Sacramento, and understandably so. But the season wasn't a complete disaster for Jackson, and he had some strong performances. The swingman put up double figures 13 times. His best performance was a fantastic 24-point game against the Bucks. The last team to take a chance on Josh was the Toronto Raptors. They signed the number four pick to a contract and allowed him to try out for their 15th and final roster spot. By all accounts, Jackson performed well in the preseason games. But the Raptors gave the returning Justin Champagny the spot instead. Why? Although Jackson looked excellent in his first few games, he faded in his last few Raptors games. The swingman shot a low 37% from the floor overall, and the last couple of games were total train wrecks. Josh only managed to hit one shot from the floor in both, combined. And isn't that the story of Jackson's career? Despite prodigious talent and a fighting spirit, he can't put together the consistency one needs to be a regular in the NBA. There is certainly little to no chance of the 25-year-old becoming a star at this point. But hopefully, the next team to give him a chance will get to enjoy his immense potential. There is still interest in Jackson, and the latest rumors have him returning to the Phoenix Suns. It isn't too late for that.